चरण कमल हेलो वेलकम टू इंट्रोडक्शन टू द सिक्स लेक्चर ट्वेल्व एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वे गोइंग टू कवर म्यूजिक एंड डांस राउंडिंग आउट आर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द आर्ट्स इफ यू रिमेंबर वी टॉक्ट अबाउट आर्किटेक्चर आर्ट लिटरेचर एंड फिल्म एंड इन पर्टिकुलर देर बी सम ओवरलैप्स विद फिल्म इन दिस लेक्चर आई ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू प्रेफेस द लेक्चर बाय सेंग दैट when we talk about music and dance a lot of the uh, discussion will be about uh, punjabi music and punjabi dance because uh, uh, many of the examples we're going to look at are not uh, inherently uh, sick in terms of the uh, uh, nature of the community as as a religious group but uh, of course uh, most six um, are from punjab and so punjabi culture plays a very important role in their lives so we'll start with uh, uh sikh music and that will be essentially sikh sacred music and i'll give uh, some examples of that and then we'll turn to punjabi music and dance first looking at folk and popular music and then folk and popular dance and again i'll i'll use these terms fairly broadly uh, where the distinction between folk and popular lies for example is not something i'll i'll explore too much um so we can divide uh, sikh music into uh, sacred music which is shabad kirtan sometimes spelled with a double e and um uh, uh mainly it consists of singing verses from the guru granth sahib the main sikh sacred text but there are also other sacred texts that uh, are used uh, for singing um sikh music in in sikh music again the uh, words are very important and for sikhs it's very important not to uh not to uh, uh di- diverge from the actual words in the sacred text uh there's another genre of sikh music uh, which is uh, not quite sacred music but uh, it is still distinctively sikh and that is uh, a genre of heroic ballads and this is called tadi music uh tadi is uh, the name of the uh, the people who sing it and the style and uh, i'll give you an example of that a lot of the themes here are um, uh, based on sikh history and the struggles of the sikh community so let's start with shabad kirtan um, the guru granth sahib is mostly organized according to rags rags are musical modes in indian classical music uh, arrangements of of the scale and uh, uh the uh, uh guru granth sahib is actually in interesting i think from a scholarly point of view because it re- represents a 16th century uh collection and organization of rags and surprisingly the uh, the modern um, collect the modern uh, organization of rags in uh, more mainstream hindustani or north indian classical music actually dates to the 19th century so this is of historical interest in general um <clears throat> the um, uh singing of kirtan though is not always based on the rags uh, according to which the um, verses are organized and uh, there are also folk and popular influences in the singing and uh, in fact there are also some uh, um, some verses or ballads in the guru granth sahib which are uh, meant to be sung um, in uh, folk tunes of the time there are actually in- instructions in the guru granth sahib So I'm going to um, play you a, f- a few clips and the idea is to give you a sense of the uh, the range of um, different styles and uh, the uh, uh this is this is far from uh, comprehensive and uh, this is this is one of the interesting things about the Sikh community is the uh, Im- how important uh, uh Shabad Kirtan has become with uh, the introduction of recorded recorded technology uh, for example uh, uh cheap uh, pre-recorded cassettes became a very uh, big part of the sikh community's uh, practice uh, starting from the 1970s and with the internet one can find uh, uh, enormous uh, troves of uh, shabad kirtan uh, on uh, various sites um the first example i'm going to uh, play for you is um, uh that of bhai harjinder singh and he's also known as bhai harjinder singh srinagar wale just to remind you bhai is a, 
uh, literally means brother, but it's, it's a term of respect or honor in this context. And uh, Srinagar Wale is actually somebody from Srinagar, which is uh, the capital of uh, Kashmir. And uh, uh, this is, again, uh, a Sikh practice sometimes to denote uh, the place, uh, place of origin to come after Singh, just as I give you an example of Bhai Khan Singh Naba, who was associated with the town of Naba. Um, uh, let's now listen to uh, a little bit or watch a little bit of this uh, uh, clip. And this has no, uh, uh, this is not a live video, but it has uh, a still of the Darbar Sahib. Simmer mana, simmer mana. बस रहे हृदय गोर चरण प्यारे बस रहे हृदय गोर चरण प्यारे सिमर मना सिमर मना राम नाम जितारे सिमर मना बस रहे हृदय गोर चरण प्यारे बस रहे हृदय गोर चरण प्यारे सो भाई अरजिंदर सिंह इज प्रॉब्ली वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पॉपुलर सिख सिंगर्स ऑफ शबद कीर्तन एंड दिस क्लिप वॉज वेरी टिपिकल ऑफ हिज स्टाइल and uh, many people find it uh, soothing and uh, uh, suitable for uh, uh, for putting them in in uh, the right frame of mind um, so for example uh, if you remember the three pillars of of uh, sikh practice nam japo kirat karo vand ke chhako then um, nam japo is uh, really uh, perhaps uh, uh, what what is connected to this kind of uh, uh, this kind of singing the uh, the next uh, clip is uh, by uh, by bhai avtar singh ragi and um, ragi here is uh, somebody who sings in rag so this is actually a generic uh, uh, name used by many many singers of shabad kirtan uh, the group also is often called ragi jatha jatha meaning group um, the um, style here is is much more similar to um, uh, 16th, 17th, maybe a, uh, uh, somewhat more modern um, Hindustani classical music. But again, there are, there are some differences which uh, uh, to some extent revolve around not uh, uh, what kinds of embellishments are used and uh, the, uh, again, the importance of uh, focusing on, on the word uh, rather than uh, the tune or the artistry of, of the singers. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the instruments uh, in, in this uh, clip separately. Bhai Avtar Singh is accompanied by his son, Bhai Kultar Singh, and by Bhai Swaran Singh on the tabla or jodi. Now, the first word is Tukhari Ragda Shevak, Tukhari Rag, which is just now put on a gondi. It's not the difference. जिन्हों पुरानी स्रोत है उन्होंने लिखा भी है ये आप की भेटा है
So that uh, uh, style was uh, perhaps more somber, uh, a little bit required more concentration perhaps than uh, uh, Bhai Arjinder Singh. Different people have different uh, um, preferences in terms of what styles of kirtan they, they like to listen to. And of course, many Sikhs will listen to different uh, styles of kirtan at different times. The next clip I'm going to play for you is, is, is uh, uh, Namdhari Kirtan. And uh, here, uh, Namdhari refers to a sect of Sikhs. I'll talk uh, more about them uh, uh, in a future lecture. But uh, Namdhari uh, comes from uh, Nam, and Dhari means uh, adhering to the Nam. Um, and uh, you'll see that they wear white and that they have uh, a distinctive style of turban. And uh, again, they play in uh, what is uh, very much uh, uh, what, what one could call a classical North Indian style. Again, I'll uh, say something more about the instruments um, uh, a, little, a little later in this lecture. Uh, the next clip is um, the Akhand Kirtani Jatha. So this is uh, actually a, a group, uh, Jatha meaning group, but uh, Akhand Kirtani Jathas are distinctive because they are uh, uh, very often uh, larger groups. They are um, uh, not, uh, not necessarily uh, full-time professionals. And uh, the singing here involves uh, several differences from uh, what has become more uh, the, the standard Kirtan style. There's um, a lot more participation by the congregation, by the uh, uh, worshippers. There's uh, 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 much more use of percussion and uh, uh, a much uh, more dynamic rhythm. And you might see some um, uh, parallels in this style with uh, the Kavali. Uh, the early, in an earlier lecture, I, I uh, played you a, a cl clip from uh, Nusrat uh, Fateh Ali Khan uh, singing in that Kavali style, and uh, you, you can go back and compare this one. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Another difference you can see in this clip is that this is done in a, a very informal setting out, outdoors. And uh, kirtan uh, can be actually sung anywhere. Uh, Sikh congregations will often get together in, um, in uh, people's homes to, uh, to sing together. And of course, there are also uh, more formal settings in, in gurdwaras or uh, even in, uh, uh, on, on stage. The next two clips are um, uh, interesting because they represent um, uh, uh, melding of cultures, perhaps. Um, these are both by um, uh, Western converts to Sikhism, or actually uh, probably children of Western converts. And um, again, I'll talk about uh, the or uh, origins of that, um, that uh, group uh, in a future lecture, but uh, the first clip is um, from, uh, uh, I think, a performance in London by Sanatam Kaur. In this, in this case, Sanatam Kaur is singing um, from the Sikh sacred text, but uh, she's uh, um, accompanied by um, uh, the guitar, which is uh, very common for um, uh, Western uh, converts to Sikhism to use the guitar as, a, as an accompaniment. Um, it might seem like a non-traditional instrument, but uh, one could argue that uh, as a plucked string instrument, it's actually quite uh, close to uh, the Rabab, which uh, Bhai Mardana used to accompany Guru Nanak right at the birth of Sikhism. Um, Sanatam Kaur is actually quite well known for um, uh, singing in, in larger concert venues and singing what one might call uh, uh, generically New Age spiritual music. Uh, the second clip um, I'll play for you now is by Niranjan Kaur. So here Niranjan Kaur is, is um, uh, singing again from the Sikh sacred text. In fact, the, the first verse, uh, the, what's known as the Mool Mantra uh, of the Japji Sab, the beginning verse of the Guru Granth Sab. And what is interesting here is, is that she is uh, singing it, whereas normally the Japji Sab would just be recited. Uh, she's innovated in terms of uh, putting it to a tune. And... Um, uh, again, this is uh, uh, something that is you know, not, uh, not uh, unacceptable, of course, um, and um, um, it's uh, interesting because, or innovative because the Japji Sab, like a few other um, uh, verses in the uh, Guru Granth Sahib, is not uh, incorporated in, in any uh, rag classification. 
The final clip that I want to play for you, Shabad Kirtan, is uh, the title sequence of a movie called Nanak Nam Jahaz Hai. And this movie was actually released in 1969 on the 500th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak. It was enormously popular. Uh, it was uh, perhaps uh, uh, the first uh, uh, big, big production uh, in uh, Indian movie making to feature Sikhs in a central role and to have a very strong Sikh religious theme. Um, the, uh, the story is, uh, again, about good and evil and uh, being guided by the uh, principles of, of uh, Sikhism. Uh, the title actually com is, uh, comes from um, a verse uh, in, in the Guru Granth Sahib, and it literally, it literally it means, um, uh, o Nanak, uh, the divine name is, uh, is, a, is a vessel or ship. And the idea here, the metaphor here, is that uh, the uh, connecting with the divine is what enables one to cross the treacherous ocean of this uh, worldly life. Okay, now we're going to um, uh, look at uh, a couple of clips of uh, Tardis singing. As I said, these are heroic ballads, the themes from uh, Sikh history. And uh, they, uh, 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 Tardi music can be sung in Gurdwaras. It's uh, the only exception to uh, um, singing. Um, uh, so otherwise, all, all, all singing in Gurdwaras has to be from the sacred text or uh, um, the, either the primary sacred text, the Guru Granth Sahib, or uh, uh, sec some uh, limited secondary text. But uh, uh, Tardi music is, is uh, just based on, on um, uh, historic um, uh, themes from Sikh history. And often it is interspersed with uh, storytelling. So there's a, a mix of um, um, singing and, and storytelling. So in some ways, uh, the Tardis are very um, similar to what one might uh, think of as uh, medieval minstrels in Europe going from place to place and uh, singing, and uh, that uh, uh, mobility is reflected in the instruments that they use, which are portable, and also in, in the way that they sing uh, standing up. Uh, well, I guess standing up maybe is, is more related to the, um, the, um, uh, the manner of singing uh, in terms of uh, you know, the heroic nature of it. So the first Tati Jatha is uh, Bhai Gur Gurpatap Singh Padam, and uh, I'll play you a short clip from them. see from the clip that they are singing in the presence of the Guru Granth Sahib and they're singing before a congregation. Um, in, uh, in the past, uh, Tardis uh, would have actually uh, roamed from village to village just uh, collecting a crowd and singing in front of them. Now it's become somewhat more formalized. Uh, the second uh, example I want to play for you is interesting because um, originally Tardis were all uh, male. And uh, I think in the 1980s, perhaps connected to um, the events of 1984, when um, 
the uh, uh, Indian government invaded the Darbar Sahib and the subsequent uh, uh, violence and repression that followed, um, there emerged uh, several um, uh, groups of uh, women uh, singing as Dardi Jathas. And this group is um, uh, Amritsar Wali, Waliya Bibiya. So Amritsar is uh, the uh, town or city where the, the, the Bar Sahib is um, located. Waliya means from Amritsar and Bibiya means uh, women, uh, a term of respect for um, women in plural. Um, so um, I'll, I'll play this clip for you as well. So again, one can find you know variations of style and uh, mixes of you know storytelling and singing, and you can also find uh, mixed gender dardi jathas, where um, men and women sing together. So now we're going to uh, turn from um, uh, Sikh music to Punjabi folk and popular music. The examples I've chosen are actually. Um, quite old, uh, five, six uh, decades uh, old. And uh, um, I've chosen these older examples uh, partly because they represent perhaps uh, uh, something that is closer to folk traditions. Um, folk traditions have evolved uh, tremendously in the last few decades with the influence of uh, Bollywood and uh, other popular media, even uh, hip hop from the West. but. Uh, <coughs> Uh, what, what I guess, again, the connection with the Sikh community is, is that uh, many of these singers uh, are, are Sikhs. So, for example, in, in the uh, first clip, Surinder Kaur and Asa Singh Mastana, uh, a very famous um, uh, singers from the 1960s, and uh, uh, they were uh, perhaps uh, uh, the equivalent of rock stars in their day in, in uh, Punjab. Uh, what they're, uh, what you're going to hear is is a love song, and it involves um, uh, t thoughts of separation and uh, uh, looking at the moon while being separated and making a connection through both both looking at the moon. So uh, very similar to uh, many other love songs. Thank you. 
The next clip I'm going to play for you is um, uh, by Prakash Kaur and Surinder Kaur. And Prakash Kaur was uh, Surinder Kaur's sister. And uh, this clip, again, doesn't have any video. Uh, it's just a, a photograph of, of uh, uh, some uh, field. Uh, this uh, clip is interesting because um, it now starts to illustrate um, uh, s several uh, things that I want to bring out in these clips. The um, uh, some aspects of uh, uh, Punjabi culture, and s sometimes these uh, aspects of Punjabi culture are um, uh, more Punjab specific, but often they're typical of no um, North Northern India, Pakistan, or even uh, South Asia in general. Uh, of course, the the regional styles would be uh, very very different. Um, so in this in this song. Um, it's um, uh, titled Mama Tetia, and uh, that uh, literally is, it translates as mothers and daughters. So it's a song of um, separation. Uh, the background here is, is that uh, in a traditional setting, uh, the uh, uh, daughter would be married uh, in an arranged marriage to um, uh, somebody from a different village. Uh, with some uh, clan connections, but uh, not not from not from the immediate family, and so the bride would uh, would leave her um, uh, parents and go and live uh, with somebody that she might never have met, um, and live in a household. Uh, typically, the the bridegroom would be living with his parents uh, in terms of uh, a joint family uh, household, which again is a very strong South Asian tradition. So uh, this this song is about the uh, feelings. Uh, it's it's um, uh, daughter singing uh, with feelings of separation from her mother after after marriage. <laughs> The next song is, is um, uh, another um, traditional song, uh, another folk song, but this is uh, as uh, associated with uh, the wedding itself. And uh, again, uh, a as, as in other cultures, a lot of the folk songs are associated with uh, various aspects of um, uh, uh, daily life. Uh, again, many of them are associated with um, uh, family, and uh, separation, so uh, perhaps stronger in, in the South Asian context than, than uh, just the purely romantic songs. Yeah. 
So this clip was from um, uh, a Punjabi movie called Bhangra, and I'll talk about Bhangra as a dance form uh, a little later today. Um, the um, uh, theme of the song is that the, the bride's um, uh, friends are preparing her after the wedding for leaving, leaving the house and uh, uh, join, uh, going with, with the, the groom and his family to the strange village. And so they're, they're um, uh, kind of consoling her about that uh, separation. And in, in particular, the impending separation here is from her father that is uh, being sung about. Um, the next clip is from another um, Punjabi movie, Do Lachyan. And uh, this is, uh, uh, I've put in quotes, a harvest song. Uh, and here you can see very much um, uh, a Bollywood style uh, influence, though in 1959 the term Bollywood was not being used, but the film industry was uh, was based in Bombay. Um, this is uh, a harvest song in the sense that it, it's uh, related to uh, uh, harvesting in a village, but of course it, it's uh, completely unrealistic in terms of the multiple drums and uh, multiple uh, other instruments and uh, uh, the, uh, the the dancing and the interactions are uh, very much uh, a screen phenomenon and not a traditional village village dance. Um, of course, we don't have uh, uh, many, uh, if any, good recordings of um, uh, traditional folk dances or songs from uh, uh, from that period. <laughs> The uh, uh, last clip I want to play for you is uh, uh, also uh, a song, but there's also some, uh, some dance involved, and this is, uh, again, Bhangra. This is from the film Nanak Nam Jahaz Hai, and this, is, uh, uh, this involves the, uh, what, what is taking place after uh, uh, the wedding, and the uh, uh, protagonists uh, are, are the parents, who are uh, dancing and uh, uh, actually singing to each other. So this is this is also uh, uh, a romantic song, but more playful. And um, there are uh, there are references to um, uh, again to places in Punjab and uh, Punjabi culture in this song. Uh, the um, the dance moves also interesting. There's uh, a mix of uh, vigorous moves and uh, more sinuous moves by. Uh, uh, the uh, the male uh, lead uh, the male lead here is in is just a, a, for those of you who have some uh, interest in Bollywood is actually Prithvi Raj Kapoor he was not a Sikh but uh, he played a Sikh in this movie and he was in fact the um, uh, first in a lot uh, in a big family uh, of um, uh, Bollywood actors uh, his sons included uh, Raj Kapoor Shami Kapoor Shashi Kapoor and his uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren have also gone on to uh, uh, Bollywood film careers. So now um, we'll turn to um, uh, folk and popular dance, and I'll begin with uh, uh, three uh, examples of Bhangra, and you can find many um, many uh, Bhangra performances uh, online. Uh, these are um, uh, 
three examples where uh, actually a, a well-known teacher in, in uh, the U.S. is uh, demonstrating uh, three different steps. And uh, I'll just uh, talk about them, and then we, we can watch the three clips uh, sequentially. The first one, the step is called fasla, and fasla uh, literally means crops. And uh, uh, I think you can see very easily some of the movements of uh, threshing and harvesting in, in this step. Um, the second clip is, uh, the step is called dhamal, and dhamal means ruckus or um, uh, noise. And uh, so this is, again, a very celebratory uh, type of uh, step. And of course, the harvest, a successful harvest, would be a time for major celebration. The final step is fumnia, and fumnia are, are um, um, uh, bracelets with uh, some um, sort of jingles or percussion. And uh, you, you'll see in this step the uh, shaking of the wrists that uh, gives the step its name. So a Bhangra dance would consist of these and many other steps uh, uh, in quick succession. But it, I thought it'd be nice to see, see it broken down a little bit. Fasla. Tamal. The next three examples are of Giddha. And uh, Giddha is traditionally a, a women's dance, just as Bhangra was traditionally a male dance. Uh, the first clip, um, the quality is, is not great, but uh, it, it's interesting because it shows, uh, it just, it shows uh, Giddha as, as a live tradition where some um, uh, uh, young women in a small town, Rampura Pool, are practicing and just dancing with, with abandon, and um, it, it, it's just fun to watch. The, <clears throat> the next clip is um, a, slightly, a slightly more um, uh, formal, formalized clip, but again, it's uh, young women, and uh, in the uh, uh, beginning, you'll see um, a small drum, the uh, two-sided drum, the dholki, which was also in, in the end of the clip from the, uh, uh, the wedding song from the movie Bhangra. And uh, again, I'll talk about instruments a little more shortly. Uh, again, you can see some of the uh, uh, different uh, uh, components of, of Giddha dances uh, in this clip. Uh, Giddha is, um, often, often involves also um, uh, a lot of storytelling where um, uh, there's, there's, um, uh, th where themes from uh, domestic life and relationships are weaved into the dancing. Uh, finally, even though I said Giddha is, a, is mostly a, a women's dance, there, there are um, traditions of uh, actually male Giddha. And uh, the final example is, is uh, um, where women and men are, are uh, both dancing Giddha. And again, at, at, uh, uh, along a continuum, you can see some uh, similarities between some of the Giddha uh, dance moves and uh, some of the uh, uh, Bhangra dance moves as well. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Bhangra became, uh, Bhangra started out as a, as a local folk dance in Punjab because it was a rural dance and because um, uh, Sikhs were mostly in rural areas. It, uh, even though it's a, technically, I guess, a Punjabi uh, folk dance, it became associated with very much with the Sikh community, and particularly the rural Sikh community. Then over time, it became uh, actually um, a dance embraced by young Sikhs everywhere uh, in uh, colleges in Punjab, then uh, in clubs in, uh, among the diaspora in, uh, in Great Britain. And uh, one of its most uh, uh, local uh, examples in, in the U.S. is that uh, university uh, campuses which, which uh, uh, have any, any kind of South Asian population uh, have uh, now uh, Bhangra dance teams. And uh, they, they engage in uh, competitions uh, very often, uh, Bhangra is danced not just by uh, uh, South Asians, not just by Sikhs, but by South Asians and even uh, uh, non-South Asians will, will join in just because of the attractiveness of the dance form. Uh, and one, one thing that has become standard in Bhangra in, uh, in the West is that uh, men and women uh, dance it together. So here's a, a, an, an example of the UC Berkeley team from a few years ago uh, taking part in a regional competition. Okay, so in those clips you saw a lot of different instruments and uh, uh, I tried to collect uh, uh, photographs of e each of those instruments. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, leave it to you to match the instruments with their names. And the uh, next slide has a list of uh, names that uh, go with the uh, previous slide. I'll just uh, go back and forth a little bit. Some of this can be tricky. There are, for example, five uh, bowed stringed instruments in, in the uh, pictures, but uh, it, it, uh, you'll be able to match with the process of elimination. I've also collected some um, additional examples of um, uh, music and dance, and some of these are more recent. So these you'll be able to watch on your, on your own, um, but uh, uh, they, they uh, add, add, I think, to uh, uh, just rounding out uh, the picture of uh, folk and popular music and dance. Um, what uh, distinguishes some of these is, is the uh, uh, greater influence of uh, Bollywood over time. These are more modern examples. I'll just briefly describe each one of them. The, uh, <clears throat> the first example is, is uh, uh, another Giddha performance. This one, 
I wanted to um, also share with you just to, uh, it, it's, it's not a, a stage performance, it's again at, at a, a, a function, like the third example that uh, I, of Gidda, mixed Gidda that I uh, played for you. But um, the, uh, the dress of the women is, is uh, interesting and uh, also you get a little more sense of the storytelling uh, that the women are engaged in. The, uh, the next clip is just um, uh, a music clip uh, by um, a group uh, known as the Safri Boys, called the Safri Boys. This is called Put Sardarande. This uh, Put is uh, sons, Sardara is uh, plural of Sardars. Um, as I mentioned, that was a term that came to be used for six um, in the uh, 18th century missile period before Ranjit Singh. And they is just the possessive, so the sons of Sardars. And uh, this, this uh, clip comes from 1993. Uh, there's there's a lot of traditional elements to the music, and it's it's really, I think, uh, from my perspective, it captures some of the anguish of Punjab after a decade of uh, violence and repression. Um, the uh, third clip is is uh, really a, a very nice uh, clip. It it was released uh, uh, just before New Year's 2020. It it uh, celebrates the the new year but also is, is full of um, social commentary uh, about uh, actually um, uh, inequalities of wealth, gender inequality, and um, uh, some of the problems of contemporary Indian society. And uh, I think this is very much in um, uh, the Sikh tradition of, um, uh, social just, of standing up for social justice. You'll see that the, the group is, is mixed and you'll see also several different instruments being used. The uh, <clears throat> next clip is from a, a Bob Bollywood movie, and uh, the uh, clip is a song called London Tumakda, and uh, London, of course, is a city. Tumakda is, is uh, shakes or... Um, uh, so the, uh, the, the song is, is um, about... Uh, uh, again, it, it, it's sort of a a love song, but uh, the, uh, uh, the the guy is singing to the girl and and saying that uh, when when she uh, uh, when when she dances, uh, all of London uh, uh, moves or shakes. So uh, the the clip is it, there's a there's a use of traditional instruments. Uh, it's a modern instrumentation. A lot of uh, it, it captures some of the abandon of of dancing at weddings. This is taking place at at a wedding in in England. I, um, and uh, the other interesting feature of this clip is uh, the uh, use of uh, uh, little um, phrases from traditional folk songs mixed in with uh, uh, more, more modern uh, uh, sort of uh, Punjabi um, uh, phrases. And uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of humor in this for uh, anybody who, who can follow the language. Um, and the final clip is actually the same, the same song. Uh, it's actually a flash mob in Santa Cruz in, in the local Costco. And uh, uh, this, this captures, in some sense, the global reach of Bo Bollywood and Bhangra and uh, Punjabi uh, folk music and dance. And uh, it, it, it's just uh, fun to see that uh, cross-cultural uh, impact and uh, interaction. Um, finally, there's some, um, um, I've, I've included uh, some uh, links to um, clips from uh, uh, part or recitation from the Guru Granth Sahib. There's um, uh, a recitation of the Japji Sahib by Bhai Tarlochan Singh. And uh, this is uh, one of, of course, many examples that you can find. Uh, he was actually, I think, one of the earliest to... Uh, have uh, to make a recording, and uh, uh, it, it became uh, quite wi widely available several decades ago. Uh, the next three are um, all um, recordings of the same um, composition from the Guru Granth Sahib. The Sukhmani Sahib is a much longer composition than the Japji Sahib. It takes over, over an hour to recite. The Japji Sahib would be recited uh, first thing in the morning by Devout Six. Uh, the Sukhmani Saab is, is uh, recited at uh, various occasions, particularly if uh, somebody has passed away 
and or in times of trouble, it's uh, 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 seen as as uh, 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 the recitation of this uh, uh, this uh, composition is especially uh, thought of as being beneficial to creating peace of mind. Sukhmani is often translated as psalm of peace, and I've given three examples here because you can see different different styles of recitation in terms of tone, pace, and uh, also you can see. Um, different degrees of musicality in the recitation itself.